How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going over another interview problem. This one is called valid parentheses. Uh, this is an extremely, extremely uh, common question. I feel like a lot of larger companies like to ask it, like Facebook, Google, and those sorts of companies. If you look here, you know, obviously there are a lot of companies that like to ask this question. This is a great question to kind of understand how you think and how you can figure out what data structures to help you um, solve this problem. So it kind of is a good test of your algorithmic knowledge, your, your problem solving skills, and also just your knowledge of general data structures. So the problem uh, description here says, given a string containing just the characters, open parentheses, closing parentheses, opening curly brace, closing curly brace, open square bracket, and closing square bracket, determine if the input string is valid. So an input string is valid if the open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets, and the open brackets must be closed in the correct order. So note that an empty string is also considered valid. So here, we just have a pair of parentheses, so we know that's valid, so we return true. Here we actually have one of each. So they all have a matching opening and closing pair, or each, sorry, each opening character has the correct corresponding closing character, and they're in the right order, right? They're not nested in some sort of weird order, so we return true. In this case, we have an opening parentheses, um, but now we see a closing square bracket, so we return false. And here, this is the same kind of idea, right? So we're closing them in the wrong order, kind of like I just mentioned. So we have an opening parenthesis. So now that we've seen an opening parenthesis, we're expecting to see a closing parenthesis, but we see an opening square bracket, so that's okay. But in this case, because we just saw an opening square bracket, we're expecting to see a closing square bracket before we see the closing parenthesis, but that's not the case. So here we return false. And here, this is valid, right, because we have an opening curly brace, then an opening square bracket, and then we have a closing square bracket before we have a closing curly brace. So that's fine. So when I first started trying to think about this problem, I initially started thinking, oh, I can just kind of count all the characters that I have of each. So let's say I had something that looked like uh, this, right? So let's have all of them kind of inside of each other. So this seemed fine, right? Because then I had um, one opening uh, parenthesis, one closing parenthesis, and basically everything matched up, right? So if I'm just counting the characters, so let's say I add one every time I see an opening parenthesis, and I subtract one every time I see a closing parenthesis, and kind of do that logic for each character, I would come out to a zero, right? So that would work. But the problem is this sort of breaks down when you have a case that's like this. So what happens if they have the right count, but they are not in the right order, right? So this we know is invalid because this just doesn't make sense, right? We have an opening, or excuse me, a closing curly brace before we actually have an opening curly brace. So that doesn't really make sense either. Um, so we, this, this logic basically breaks down. It's not just enough to have a count of each character. So now what we have to start thinking about is order matters, right? So in this example, this breaks down because we saw an opening parentheses, then an opening square bracket. So we know that we have to see a closing square bracket before we see a closing parentheses. So the order matters. We have to keep track of that. And so a good thing that we can think of in terms of a data structure that could help us keep track of that is actually a stack, right? So the last opening character that we see, that's the first closing character that we're gonna to wanna to see. So we just saw an opening square bracket, we wanna see a closing square bracket, uh, like in this case, right? So we see an opening curly brace, now we see an opening square bracket, so now we expect to see a closing square bracket, and we do. And now we know the last thing before that was a opening curly brace, so now we expect to see a closing curly brace. So our stack in this case would have looked like, okay, remember an opening curly brace. Then we see the opening uh, square bracket, so we expect to see that next. So here, if this is at the top of our stack, we should expect to see a closing square bracket, and we can kind of remove this, and now we're gonna expect to see a closing curly brace. So we can use a stack to keep track of this. So let's kind of start formulating this solution, right? So we just talked about two things. One, order matters, and two, we need to see the corresponding character. So we can keep a stack, that's gonna, uh, basically, we're gonna push to our stack every time we see an opening, 
character, whether it's curly brace, square bracket, or parenthesis. And then every time we see a closing character, it needs to match the last thing, or the thing, excuse me, the thing that is at the top of our stack. And if it doesn't, we know it's not valid. So we can kind of go through this entire um, string that we're given and push things onto the stack if they're opening curly braces or any kind of opening character. And any time we see a closing character, we one, make sure the stack isn't empty, and two, we make sure that the top of the stack contains the corresponding uh, closing character that we expect to see. So let's get started. So let's make a stack. It's going to contain character objects. We'll call it stack, set it to a new stack of characters. So now we'll use a for each loop. So for every character in s dot two care array. So this is just going to convert the string to a character array, and then it's going to grab every character in that character array. So now we just have a for loop. I guess, you know, it's a for each loop, but anyways. So now we can go through character by character. So now we're going to check if the character we're at is equal to, let's say, an opening parenthesis, or the character we're at is equal to an opening square bracket, or the character we're at is equal to an opening curly brace. All we want to do is push that character onto the stack. So that's the easy part, right? So anytime we see any kind of opening character, we just push it onto the stack. Otherwise, now we need to start checking the conditions when we see types of closing uh, characters. So if C is equal to a closing character, let's do uh, let's just go in the same order, I guess. So we did parentheses first. So if it's equal to a closing parenthesis, we need to make sure that the top of the stack, well, one, that the stack isn't empty. So let's check that. So and the stack is not empty. And stack.peak, which will give us the top of the stack, if that's equal to an open parenthesis, meaning the last opening character that we've seen is an opening parenthesis, we'll just say stack.pop. So in other words, this case checks out, right? So we just saw a closing parenthesis, the stack is not empty, and the top of the stack contains the corresponding opening parenthesis, or, or uh, excuse me, opening character, corresponding opening character. So we basically can continue. So we're just going to remove whatever's at the top of the stack and keep going through our characters. So now we'll take care of the other case. So if C is equal to the closing curly brace and the stack is not empty and stack.peak and again is we need to equal we need it to equal the corresponding opening character. Again we'll just say stack.pop. And now our next case we're just going to do the same thing but for Closing curly brace, stack dot is empty, and stack dot peak is equal to opening curly brace. We'll say stack dot pop, right? So if all these conditions are satisfied, we're just going to keep popping off the stack and we're fine. But if any of these things aren't satisfied, so like maybe we're at a closing parenthesis. And let's say the stack isn't empty, but the top of the stack, let's say, doesn't contain an opening parenthesis. Boom, we know there's a problem. So here we can just return false right away. So if any of these conditions aren't met, we'll just return false because we know something's gone wrong. Otherwise, if we've gone through this entire thing and we've popped everything out of the stack, we just need to return if the stack is empty or not. So in other words, if there's still somehow like a dangling character in our stack, it obviously doesn't have a, right? The only way you can get into the stack is if it's an opening character. So there's obviously some sort of dangling opening character in this case. So if the stack is empty, we've successfully removed a, a closing character or basically we've like removed everything from the stack. And if that's not the case, we have a problem. So once we get through this entire loop of characters, all we need to do is check if the stack is empty or not. And I think that should give us our solution. And it does. Awesome. So let's check out the details. And it says we pass 
uh, 76 out of 76 test cases, and we are in the 97th percentile in terms of runtime. So that's how you figure out um, if parentheses are valid. So again, this is a very common interview question. I hope this is helpful, guys, and I'll see you next time.